From Microbe TV, this is Beyond the Noise, episode number 76, recorded on the 28th of July, 2025. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and joining me today is your host, Dr. Paul Offit. Hi, Vincent. This is the video version of Paul's column on Substack called Beyond the Noise, cutting to the chase on important health topics. Today's column, which we'll talk about, is called RFK Jr.'s Cruelest Cut of All. Late June this year, Paul, RFK Jr. cut off U.S. funding to the Global Alliance Vaccine Initiative, which is also called Gavi. What, what is Gavi? So Gavi was founded in 2000, um, and its principal interest is in vaccinating the world's children. So they probably vaccinated about a billion children during that period of time. Over the last 25 years, they probably saved 20 million lives. And um, they're one of the best programs out there that represents our interest in, in doing what we should do, which is to show that we care for those countries that are less fortunate than us. And during that time, at least in 80 countries, they've lowered the infant mortality rate. It's a phenomenal program. Who, who besides the U.S. funds Gavi? So many other countries fund that in the developed world. Um, we represent about 13 to 15 percent of that funding. And we over the uh, I think uh, the Biden administration had made a roughly two point five eight billion dollar commitment to to Gavi over the next few years. But Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has recently um, not chosen not to honor that commitment. I call on Gavi today to re-earn the public trust and to justify the $8 billion that America has provided in funding since 2001. And I'll tell you how to start taking vaccine safety seriously. Consider the best science available, even when the science contradicts established paradigms. Until that happens, the United States won't contribute more to Gavi. Why did RFK Jr. decide to cut Gavi funding? So he held up a paper that was um, generated from data in the 1980s by a researcher named Peter Abbey, A-A-B-Y, and said, look, here it is. This, this DTP um, vaccine um, is, is killing children. It's, there's increased mortality in those who received this DTP vaccine as compared to those who didn't. A landmark study in 2017 by five highly regarded mainstream vaccine experts found that girls vaccinated with DTP were 10 times more likely to die from all causes in the first six months of life than those children who were unvaccinated. Now, the DTP vaccine has probably saved 40 million lives um, since its inception. And the paper that he held up was bogus for many reasons. So that work described in that paper, first of all, it was in the 80s, right? And it was done in Guinea-Bissau, right? So a single country... And you point out in your uh, column that that work was seriously flawed. So let's talk about how it's flawed. Flawed in many ways. One, um, the mortality rate in Guinea-Bissau, which is a West African country, at the time they were doing, at least generating data, was much, much higher than it is today. So it's not really relevant to today. Um, two, the, um, the study really was not reproducible, including by the same authors that published the initial study when they looked at more recent data. Um, three, and I think most importantly, it was not reproducible. There were other studies done in other developing world countries like uh, Burkina Faso, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, and Bangladesh that showed that and the, the way that those studies were uh, reported was, quote, showed no negative effect of DTP vaccination. So an irreproducible study based on ancient data that was critically flawed. They also didn't control for things like healthcare seeking behavior, um, socioeconomic background, medical background. So it was it was a study, frankly, that arguably shouldn't have been published and certainly was not reproduced. So to hold this up and say, this is the paper, this is the reason, this is a landmark study, and this is why we're not going to be honoring our financial commitment to the developing world, I think is tragic. So just to make, make sure our listeners understand, if, if there's so much mortality in a country and you don't control for it, you're going to see that mortality in kids who are getting vaccinated as well as not vaccinated, right? That's right. Exactly. And, and the other point that you make is that today's DTP vaccine is different, right? So that study is no longer relevant. That's right. We've gotten better over the years at making uh, vaccines, yes. So based on one bad study, 
and ignoring all the others that you've pointed out, RFK Jr. can simply cut funding like this, which is science by edict, not committee. Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah. Yes. Although my understanding is that he really shouldn't have been able to do that. I thought that all comes from the State Department. That would be Marco Rubio, who in theory would be able to say that. But I don't even know if this was run by the State Department. He just did this on his own. Hmm. So by saying that, so he originally said, and you say this in the column, that Gavi didn't follow vaccine safety or something of that sort, right? When the science was inconvenient, Gavi ignored the science. Right, that's what he said. He said that the, the people who are in controlling Gavi are not paying attention to vaccine safety. And for that reason, we are withdrawing our commitment. And the only thing he held up to support that point of view was a, a poorly performed, irreproducible irrepro study based on ancient data that is irrelevant to today. So he's essentially spreading misinformation about the DTP vaccine, correct? Which is among much of the misinformation he spreads about all vaccines, right? Because he um, thinks that vaccines have simply um, replaced infectious diseases with chronic diseases. I think he is going to do and is doing the same sorts of things right now in the United States. So, Paul, is this how science works? You have a body of literature and you pick one paper out and you say, aha, this is how it works? No. I mean, in a better world, if you really were going to consider, do we want to continue to fund Gavi? Do we think what they're doing is a good thing when it's sort of obvious since they've probably vaccinated a billion children and saved 20 million lives and decreased into mortality in 80 countries, that it is a good thing. But if you really think that there's a paper that makes you wonder whether or not we're doing something that's, that's wrong, great. Pull together a group of experts who actually have an expertise, go through those studies, see whether or not they uh, should in any sense determine policy. But he doesn't do that. He just has these fixed, immutable beliefs that vaccines are harmful, and he will do everything he can to lessen immunization rates, not only in the world, but he's, as he's also showing in this country. All right, so I'm going to ask you a rhetorical question I've asked you probably 50 times. RFK Jr. knows nothing about science. He's a lawyer. Why do we have to be subject to his malignant ignorance? He thinks he does. He, he always says that. He says, you know, all my, my uh, studies or my statements are all science-based. <laughs> I mean, he wrote a paper, a book called Thimerosal, Let the Science Speak, where if you read that book, you realize that the science wasn't speaking at all. This is who he is. He does this over and over again at the second confirmation hearing um, in front of uh, Senator Cassie's Health, Education, Labor and Pensions group. He was asked several times by Senator Sanders, by Senator Cassie, but you have to admit, they said, that vaccines don't cause autism. He said, no, I don't admit that at all. Show me a gold standard study and I'll change my, change my mind. Vaccines do not cause autism. Do you agree with that? Uh, as I said, I'm not going to go into HHS with any preordained. I asked you a simple question, Bobby. The uh, studies all over the world say it does not. What do you think? Uh, Senator, if you show me those studies, I will absolutely, well, as I promised to Chairman Cassidy, I will I, apologize. That is a very troubling response. Then at the end, he holds up his gold standard study, which was never published in a scientific journal, never published in a medical journal. Um, was horribly flawed. It was a Medicaid study out of Florida that was horribly flawed. It was never peer-reviewed. That was his gold standard study. He, what he means by gold standard study, or land, in this case, landmark study, is he means a study that comports with his science-resistant fixed beliefs that vaccines are harmful. All vaccines are harmful. Well, there have been many, as you know, study, over a dozen studies on autism and MMR vaccines, and none of them have shown a linkage, correct? 24 studies have shown that you were at no greater risk of getting autism if you got the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine, or if you didn't. He still says MMR vaccine causes autism. So why try? I mean, he's never going to be convinced by science. You quote Atul Gawande, who, who oversaw uh, USAID. What did he say about uh, this Gavi defunding? So what, what uh, Dr. Gawande said um, is this will likely mean more deaths than any other. You know, more than 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 a million children, 14 million in the in the world now have never received a single dose of any vaccine. I think RFK Jr.'s withdrawal from Gavi will only worsen this ongoing tragedy. Of course, he he also withdrew support for USAID, which also immunizes children. Right. That's right. So does RFK Jr. have no conscience? He's okay with children dying. 
He's a zealot. He believes this. He believes vaccines are harming children. He says this over and over again. He said it over and over again for the last 20 years. It's who he is. He thinks that when he withholds vaccines, he's saving children. He's that far gone. And until people realize, and by people I mean congressmen, who are really the only ones who can, can change this, until they realize how much harm is being done, um, this isn't going to change. This is a political problem. It requires a political solution at some point. Hopefully, we'll be able to appear, appeal to that moral center of congressmen <laughs> so that they'll actually value children's health more than their own careers. Well, by some estimates, children have already died because of the cuts to USAID funding. But these are not in the U.S. I suspect that he and his ilk don't care uh, if the children are dying outside the U.S. I'm not sure if he cares about children dying in the U.S. I mean, you have, you know, you have— Two healthy little girls who died of uh, measles, and and at the same time in this country this year, that's the first child death since 2003. And at the same time, that's happening. He's decrying the measles vaccine. You've had about 260 children die from flu this year, and um, you know I haven't heard him say anything about that. You had at least five children die from whooping cough this year. I haven't heard him say anything about that. What he should do as head of health and human services is stand up and loudly and clearly have a press conference where he says, vaccinate your children. This is preventable and we should prevent it. You write in the column that RFK Jr. isn't finished. What do you mean by that? Oh, he's just getting started. You, you can already see it happening. He said that he wants to look into aluminum adjuvant citrine vaccines. Just in the last couple of days, he was testifying at a governor's meeting where he said that aluminum in vaccines, when it's tested in, in with like with peanut allergies in, in uh, animal models, it only increases the peanut allergy. And I asked the scientists there, how do you induce a, an allergy in a rat? And he said, it's formulaic. You, do, you take an aluminum adjuvant and inject it into that rat with a protein. If it's a peanut protein, that rat will have a lifetime allergy to peanuts. And so he's, you can see he's already laying the groundwork for aluminum adjuvants and vaccines causing allergies, asthma, eczema, and he may extend it further to autism. We'll see. He will hold up some similarly bogus paper as he does again and again sometime in the next year and say, look, look at all the harm that these aluminum containing adjuvants uh, or aluminum adjuvant containing vaccines are causing. And then he will do the next thing, which is he'll manipulate the vaccine injury compensation program. He's already hired a law firm out of Arizona to help him do that. Well, speaking of aluminum, I, I read the paper that you uh, mentioned last week about uh, safety of aluminum containing vaccines, which was done in Denmark. And I was amazed that so we have a lot of aluminum in us and the amount added by vaccines is negligible. A, an aspirin has like five milligrams of aluminum and that's more than you get in all the childhood vaccines. So how can he say something like that? <laughs> because he ignores the science. Yeah, I, we know that. And the, the problem is that everyone seems to go along with them. All of Congress goes along with them. The president goes along with them. Uh, CDC, all these agencies, FDA, that have been reorganized to agree with him. This is the real problem, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, he's, he, when he's saying things like that America needs to be healthier, I think that's reasonable. We do spend a lot of money for health care and don't get much bang for our buckets compared to other developed world countries. We do have a high rate of obesity, higher than many other countries. We do have as a consequence of increased uh, rates of obesity, you know, increased rates of diabetes, hypertension, high blood pressure, et cetera. Um, that's all true. And, and I think we do have an over-reliance on ultra-processed foods. I think that's true too. And that's very appealing. But the problem is, you know, why this assault on vaccines? How, how does that have anything to do with making us unhealthy? And he believes that's true. He believes that we'll become healthier again if we just vaccinate less. And he's dead wrong about that. So your last sentence of the column is his withdrawal from Gavi is just the beginning of his war against vaccines. Do you think most Americans want a war against vaccines? No. Most American parents trust vaccines. I think recent studies have shown that at least 75 percent don't even have any specific concerns at all about vaccines and 90 percent generally accept vaccines. Um, and that's across the aisle. Obviously, Republican and Democrat parents both value vaccines. I think, you know, the question is, um, when do we hear from them? 
When do they march into their congressman's office and say, this isn't okay? You need to reestablish these vaccine programs that were, that were gradually eroding in this country. And um, until that happens, we're going to be stuck with RFK Jr. and the harm he's going to cause. Unfortunately, Paul, I don't think it's going to be vaccines that flip Congress. It's going to be something else that's going on these days. But however we get it, um, I agree with you. I don't think most Americans want a war on vaccines, yet a fringe element has is now running the country. And so we've got to fight it as long as we can. Yes, you're right. We'll put a link to this column in the show notes so you can read all about it. That's Beyond the Noise with Dr. Paul Offit. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Vincent.